Hi everyone, welcome to Watercolor Wednesday. I am Bonnie Krebs, creator of Watercolor The Art Impressions Way. And this week we are going to do another project with a little fence. So last week we made um, a little fence project using the Molotow mask fluid. And so many of you loved that project so much, I decided to uh, do another one. And I'm gonna up the difficulty uh, level just a little bit and challenge you on this project, but I know that you can do it. So uh, it's it actually doesn't take very many stamps. So again, it really is an easy project. Um, we're gonna use a structure. And so I used the little house from this structure, the um, this little uh, cute little house right here, Watercolor Series Project 8. And then in addition, we only need something from our flowers and foliage set. So the little wildflowers right here, the little daisy bunch. And then in the, um, in the foliage set, we're gonna use the vine and both sizes of the grass. Okay, so super easy. You all know how to stamp the flowers in the foliage, so I know that you can do this project. Okay, so let's get started. We're gonna start with the Molotow masking fluid, and we're just gonna make a little fence. Now this time, we're gonna make a little smaller one, but still just as easy. So I don't know, about 10, probably 10. And don't make them all straight. Put them, you know, some of them closer together, some of them farther away. Make it a little interesting. I don't know how many that is, three, six, nine, 10, 11. Okay, so 11. Let's put a little um, decorative um, point on the top. And don't worry if you don't get these all perfect. It really doesn't matter. And then we're gonna come across here on the bottom, just like this, and then under here like this. Okay, so again, make sure that there's no white areas showing through because we don't want the we don't want the ink to bleed through. We want to make sure that these areas all stay really white. And we're going to let that dry and I'm going to be back in 5 minutes. Okay, my masking fluid is completely dry now, so we're ready to stamp over the top and we know that our white areas are going to be protected. So the first step is going to be to stamp the little cottage in the background. So I've got that on a block here and I'm going to ink it with a really light color. So I want I want this cottage to kind of be faded out in the background, so not really dark. Uh, so we're going to start with the number 40. That's the number 40 brown gray. And we're just going to ink this entire little cabin or bungalow. Um, with the number 40. And I'm going to use my stamp positioner because I want to make sure that I get it in the right place. So I'm just going to use my little L square here. Stamp this in the corner. And now I can see exactly where I want to put it. And I'm going to sit it right, pretty much right on top of the fence, maybe down just a little bit. Okay, right about there. There, that's good. I'm going to put my T square back in and just remove this and I'm going to ink it again now. This all up. Okay. And now I'm going to stamp it right where I had it here. Okay, so in the background, just like that, perfect. Okay, so we're gonna start out now by pulling the color out of the lines. We wanna drag this color out. So we're gonna start in here where the shadows would be and this is gonna be pretty light. These, this side of the, the little structure like right here, these are gonna be pretty dark, these areas, that's gonna be in the shadow, as well as this entire side of the house here. So we're gonna come back and add some more color in here. Okay, that's about all we have to do on this. So let's add some color now to the roof, and we're gonna do that with the sepia. So we're gonna add a little color to the palette and I'm going to add some number 86 as well. We're gonna use this for the shadow on the house. We're gonna keep that little cottage white, but we know that when things are white, they're never uncolored. So we wanna make sure that we're adding enough shadow in here so that we can see the dimensions of that cottage and it doesn't look flat. Okay, so we'll start with the roof and we'll just brush some of this color on. Just dip your brush in water and add some of this color to the roof. Uh, keep that top of the roof light. So you want to leave a little highlight at the very top of the roof. That's going to add more dimension. Just like this. Same on this side. And we can always come back in again and add a little darker color, especially on these uh, little roofs here that are on the side. 
Okay, that looks pretty good. Let's add a little color now to the windows. And we're gonna do that with the number 86. So we're just gonna brush in a little of this color here. Add some detail to this little window here. Just a little bit. And we can actually do a little over here as well. Okay, so now we're gonna take some more of this color and the sides of this little structure, these are gonna be pretty dark because that's gonna be in the shadow. So all of this over here. Don't be afraid to get color in here because that's gonna really help to make your image look three-dimensional. We wanna show that this is back in the shadows. There's a lot of foliage going on here and we wanna see that, that darker area. Just keep putting the color on to get it dark enough. And actually over here on the side, I would use my fine tip and really, this is the number 86, this is the fine tip and really get this dark in here. Underneath the, the eaves here, that's gonna be really dark. Don't be afraid to put some of this color back in. That's gonna really pop things out. Okay, let's add some color to the door now. And we can use that same sepia. This is pretty subtle in the background. So uh, the neutral colors are actually really good. Okay, now take a little more of this and add some color on the side. Just keep your, keep your hand loose and just add a little more of this shadow color in here. Don't be afraid to do this. You know, the more that you play with these stamps, the more confidence you'll have to do things like this, but you'll be surprised at how much it adds. And see again, on the sides can be really dark and you can see what a difference that's making. And always try to go dark, dark to light, light. So where you can get these windows in really dark, do that. Okay, I think that looks pretty good. We're ready to move on to the next step. Okay, and we're gonna start, um, the next step is gonna be to add some foliage in. So we're gonna take that large grass now. This is the large grass from the foliage set, and we're gonna ink that with a green, and you can use either green that you like. This is a number 15 green. Actually, we want the large grass. That was the small one, so we want the large grass. And we're gonna stamp this kind of right in this area right here. So not at the very bottom, but sort of in the middle. And remember, you're gonna ink this one, two, three, four, five, so count to yourself. Make sure you're getting it in there a bunch of times. And our white areas are all gonna be protected, so you don't have to worry about this masking fluid. It's gonna protect all your white areas. And we want a lot of color in here kind of surrounding these areas. And just keep adding the water to that. Okay, that looks good. Let's get some flowers in here now. We're gonna do that with a little filler flower. And I'm using a bright red. So this is actually called uh, persimmon. And I don't need the whole thing. I'm just gonna use a few but I'm still gonna go in that circular motion. One, two, three, four, five. So one, two, three, four, five. Really get this in here. Okay, now we're gonna add some water to that and just dab. Just dip your brush and dab. You can drag some of this color down into the grass area. That's okay. Just like so. We're kind of surrounding this fence with color again. Okay, so now we're gonna kind of go back to the next layer and that's adding some foliage in behind. So we're gonna take our little vine and we're just gonna ink some foliage back in here. 
And you can bring this up quite a ways. Let's put a little bit in here and in here. This is gonna look really overgrown where this house is. So we wanna see a lot of foliage in here. We're gonna add some flowers in too. So just get that foliage in there. Now we're gonna add some water and we're just gonna blend. Now this is gonna all come together once we take that masking fluid off. It's kind of hard to see with that uh, blue masking fluid on here how this is gonna look, but you'll love it when we take it off. Okay, so we've got our foliage now in the background. So we've actually done three layers. So grass, flowers, and now foliage in the background. And let's add some more flowers in here. So let's clean this off. And we're gonna use the purple. So this is the number eight. And we can actually use the whole stamp this time, but pretty light. So up in here in the background, just a little bit. And then just a your brush. These little flowers are so versatile. They're just, they're so easy to use. And you know, once you get really good at using them, uh, you can do so many projects. You can just look at a project and say, I know how to do that because I know how to stamp the flowers and foliage and the vines and, and everything else. Okay, so let's do one more layer. We're gonna go up even higher and we're gonna take that same foliage now, again, and we're just gonna go up even farther up above. Dip our brush and just blend this out. You can really blend this out up here because this far back, you wouldn't really see the foliage, the flowers, or I mean, excuse me, the leaves. So you can blend out a lot of this detail. So cute, looks good. And it looks really complicated, but we know how easy it is. It's just a matter of stamping and adding water. So easy. Let's add some sky now in the background. People always ask me about adding sky and honestly, this is the easiest thing to do. Brush in a little color and be done. I think a, a little sky, uh, rather than making, um, adding too much color in here, just do a little bit. I, I feel like that adds way more to your image. If you just do the idea of the sky. Okay. Let's make sure we have enough color back in here. You see all this foliage back in here? That's gonna add a lot of shadow to this house. So we wanna make sure this is really dark back in here. Okay, so I think we're getting close to um, taking our masking fluid off. Let's just make sure we have enough green underneath. And we're going to kind of let this fence fade out a little bit. If you look at the um, at the original here, you can see that here's that bottom line of the fence. And really, it doesn't, we're not really showing these boards right here. We're kind of letting this just fade out. So we want just a little bit of green under that bottom um, fence line. And we're just going to let it just kind of fade out. Okay, so let's just make sure that's dry. Just add a little more color in here. You can always go back and do this. And let's just make sure that we've got enough color under the overhangs. Really want to pop that up. Okay, so let's take that masking fluid off now. We're just gonna rub all of this off. And we can see our little fence under here. And it looks pretty flat because we haven't added any shadow to it. So we never wanna leave anything uncolored. So especially when it's white. So dip your brush now, add a little, um, 
86. This is the 86 African Violet again. So we're going to dip our brush and we're going to take a little of this 86. And we're just going to make our little um, flat line here where we made that little decorative edge. A little top of the posts. We're just going to make that little blue line on here. And then we're gonna come straight down on the side, just like we did before. Just keep working your way across. They don't have to be perfect. I think it's better if they're not perfect. That's all part of watercolor. It's. It's really, it's very abstract, but that's what makes it so beautiful. And that's what makes all of these projects so different. Every one that you do, and I don't know how many times I've used these stamps and they're different. It's different every time. But I love that about it. I love that you can give away something that's unique and different and special. So under here, see where this plank, we're just kind of letting this fade out here. Just make sure we can really see that shadow under here. Okay, so let's add a little bit um, of grass in here. So now we're gonna use the small one. And we're gonna use that same green, so number 15. We're just gonna come right along the front of it here. Pull that color up. Just like this, and we can do it again on the other side. Dip our brush. And let's tie in some of this purple down here. So let's use that same little flower again. And I'm just thinking a few. So just a couple. but I'm still going uh, in a circular motion. I'm still going at least five times. Get my brush and pinch it off. And now we can go on top of this little fence. And just kind of pull this color out. And I'm just going to go back here and make sure that I can really see these little fence posts. They look a little light to me, so I want to make sure we can really see that. Okay, one thing left to do, and that is to sign and date. Be sure you do that. Sign and date your work, put it in a frame, put it on a card, and give it away to someone because they will absolutely love it. Thank you so much for watching, and I will see you next week.